Okay, here's one. It says, what's the best approach to RA? RA is rheumatoid arthritis. Well, where I see the RA the most, of course, is in the athletes, unfortunately, and the bodybuilders. I've had one RA case that did not have any sulfur in their body and looking at their iris. Every every case that I've ever had, and this is almost true with what the, the gentleman asked earlier was the, uh, or the lady was the uh, limes. Uh, always seemed to have sulfur with limes, lupus, uh, definitely with RA. It seems like you always have had that factor in you. Now, how that affects the rheumatoid factors, I don't know. It's too much. You know, but it's enough to say it's another highly acidosis problem. It comes uh, in athletes that pump high proteins a lot. You see it in bodybuilders. You see it in, uh, you know, again, athletes that pump a lot of protein. And there's nothing fun about it. I had one guy, he had 26, 27 inch arms, made some magazines. You know, he's got, he's got these pecs way out here. Came to me with his joints way out here and way out here. And he, he then worked on a tugboat, and he needed to have, so he could run the boat, he needed to have. and So we worked him and worked him and worked him and worked him. He got a hard time getting all raw, because he just couldn't lose that protein, protein, protein. But he eventually came around, finally he realized that, you know, he can't do it. So it took him a while to get himself turned around, but it's enough to say that RA is an extreme acidosis. All your arthritis, all your limes, all your lupus, all your fibromyalgia, lump them in one pot. You get rid of them the same way, all of them. There's nothing special about either one of them. You can treat them like they treat them and just get yourself worse and worse. And notice that inflammation is a part of all of it, meaning acidosis. Remember, inflammation is simply your body's immune response to what? So you have interleukins, you have histamine responses, but most of those are to pathogens and things. What about proteins, acids, and your, your cholesterols, your edemas, and your calciums? So if this is systemic acidosis, what do you do about it? It's like the poor girl earlier where she so, her teeth are breaking down on her. That's acidosis. That's extreme acidosis. So, how do you stop that? Well, you stop eating acids for one thing, acid forming foods, and those are mainly proteins. Your starches are acid formers too, really. So, you go to the, the family of foods that are not acid formers, and mostly you're into the, most of the fruits, excuse me, berries and melons, and vegetables. Now, there's some acid forming fruits, no question. Most of those are unripe, though. Because you get a good ripe fruit on a plant or tree, and you got something that makes your toes curl. Like I picked my last, I've got four um, uh, orange trees. The, um, uh, oh no, I got something, another thought cramming in there. Get out of there. I've got four navel orange trees. And two of them, the navels are about that big. And two of them, they're about that big. The two that are that big, I bought from Home Depot years ago. The other two I bought from a nursery that specializes in them this big. And of course, just a couple of them for a whole glass of juice. Oh, and I used my last orange on them. Sweet as honey. But if they're not ripe, they're acid forming. There's no question about that. But getting ripe fruit is not easy for everybody. You know, and I understand that, so I don't know what to say. Do your best, guys. It's all I all you can do is you do your best. You wake up where you are, what you need to do to get well, and you do your very best to get there. But when grapes burn your tongue, holy crap, that's bad. That's not good. That's extreme acidosis. You know, that's not good. Oh my god.